Um, so as you notice, I have a blanket down on my mat. You don't have to do that, but now that we're getting a little cooler, it gives us a layer of warmth between us. We'll be on, our, on the ground for a little bit is my point. And then we might do just a little slip and then slide. And so it just kind of gives a surface that you can move and not get stuck on your sticky mat. You'll start lying down on your back and there's not a rush. Don't like, oh my God, I gotta get my blanket down so I can lay down on my back so I can move into Shavasana. Take your time. <laughs> if my friends are watching this as a recording, of course, you can always hit pause and then hit play again once you're settled. Um, have a couple of blocks for later if you've got them. And then just go ahead and you can have your feet on the ground version or the legs extended, the two usuals. My, one is more towards constructed rest where my feet are wide, my knees lean in. The other one is my legs extend out and they're about hip distance and I let my legs go into external rotation. Why you would do one over the other? Well, that depends on what's happening in your low back, your hip joints, your knee joints, et cetera, right? Um, find the one that feels the most comfortable. Arms out a little bit, palms up. And let's just take a few moments here as per usual, right? I like to do that beautiful body scan. Um, and you know, every once in a while, I'm like, I get a little, um, I don't know what the word is uh, about whether or not I should continue to scan. But the thing is like, people might find it boring or da, da, da. However, the thing is, is when we start to have something on a regular basis, right? Every Tuesday and Thursday, you show up at 830, you lay down on your mat. This begins in this way. Your nervous system knows that your nervous system responds to that. Yeah. So this scan, every time you start to do it, whether it's my voice or yours, your nervous system knows this at this point in time, and your nervous system will start to move in to activate the parasympathetic, the rest and digest, yeah? So bring your awareness into your forehead and your eyebrows and the muscles around the eyes. Soften, of course, feeling sensations, noting what's happening today. Bring your awareness into the jaw, and I'm going to bring you to that, that place we've been talking about, about where your earlobe connects into your face. That's about the hinge of your jaw, so right there, soften from that space, deep, deep inside. Soften the tongue, the throat, the neck, and let that softness come down to those muscles that run from the sides of the neck over to the tops of the shoulders, softening the shoulders through the arms. Go through those joints, right? All the way down, lower arms, wrists, hands, fingers. Bring your awareness into your chest and your upper back. And then we're gonna take that whole torso at once, but you know, you're paying attention to all of it, the front, the back, the sides, and everything in between through that middle rib cage. Scanning through the belly and the low back. And then pause in the hips for just a few moments. Let those hips soften just as much as you can. We've talked about this being a major place of tension, partly because adrenaline goes through our system a lot and the muscles contract to get us ready to fight, you know, to, 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 to run, to freeze, or to, uh, to um, oh, wow, my brain's not here. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. Go through the upper legs, the knees, the lower legs, the ankles, feet, and toes. Fight, flight, or freeze, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bring your awareness into your breath and let that soft belly breath, it's probably already going, right? Usually by the time we've scanned the body, for most of us, we already have a soft belly breath. But just check into it. You might deepen it a little bit without stressing the body out. Maybe about two more breaths from this place. So hopefully we start to cultivate a little bit of focus, a little bit of calm, right? But we're still alert. We're not falling asleep. If you are, that's not wrong, right? It's just some note that about yourself. <clears throat> now, all of us, let's go ahead and extend our legs all the way out to straight and let's meet there. We're gonna start with that Baddha Konasana stuff. Um, so Lori, if it doesn't feel good going out to the side, you're gonna let your knee go straight up to the sky, right? Go ahead and pull that right heel back. We'll, we'll all get into that one in a little bit and let that right thigh be heavy here. And then go ahead and push that right heel forward, extend the right leg back out again. So this is half bound angle, yeah? I pull that heel back, I let my thigh get heavy. I'm not pulling my right heel. Go ahead and go at your own pace here, in and out. 
I'm not really pulling my heel any higher than my left knee and probably not even quite as high as my left knee. So it's not a forceful action. I'm trying not to engage too many muscles for this particular move at this point in time, right? We'll work in strength in a little bit. You know me, I'll always get you strength. <laughs> I was informed that uh, not this Thursday, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before I actually got pretty, uh, pretty strong and we did a lot of standing poses and held them for a long time and they weren't sure if it was a gentle class. So sorry about that if you felt the same. I'll try to be a, a little softer today. This time when you bring the heel up, the next time you bring the heel up, let that leg get heavy, let the left hip lift if it wants to. You might even put your right hand on your inner right thigh if that's reachable without you know causing tension. And just go ahead and it's not so much I'm pushing down as I'm lengthening the inner groin out through the inner knee, just trying to say hi to that groin, inner right groin muscle, right? Muscles, I should say. It's more than one muscle we're affecting right now. And then go ahead and extend that leg all the way back out. Just simply that left side, you know the drill at this point in time, right? I'm gonna drag that heel back a little bit, let that thigh be heavy. My pelvis is not stabilized right now. My right hip can totally lift as I drag it up. I'm not gonna drag it up too high because I don't wanna engage too many muscles, right? So nothing new on this side. And let's do that, I don't know, about maybe one more time or so. And so the next time that you do bring that heel up, and again, Lori, you can just go straight up to the sky if this feels like too much. Let that thigh get heavy. You might even put your left hand on your left thigh somewhere where you can get it easily. And again, I'm pulling, gently pulling my inner groin out of my pelvis past and beyond my inner knee. I'm just helping lengthen that line, yeah? Right hip can lift. Soften the shoulders, the jaw, the tongue. And then release the hand, release that leg all the way back out to straight and just pause and notice what you notice. And now this is where we were going, but Lori, this is the one I was going to talk about for knees, right? Now this time we're going to flex the right foot, put the left foot on the ground. I'm going to actually turn my body so you can see my right leg a little easier. And I'm going to push that right heel forward to the bottom side of my mat, yeah? And then from there, this time I want my knee to track straight up to the ceiling. So I'm gonna pull my right heel back, keeping it connected to the earth. This is where that, that blanket comes in handy or a non or a slidable surface, yeah? And I keep my foot flexed and I'm gonna push that heel back out. I get a little resistance, but I'm gonna work with it the best that I can, right? Even on my blanket. If you need to lift it, you need to lift it, but try to push down into the ground as you pull that heel back towards the buttocks Right? And that knee stays straight up towards the sky the whole dang time. So you're going to go in and out. Now you know the pattern. You're working at your own pace. So don't wait for me to tell you to inhale in and exhale out. You know, find your own pattern there, your own rhythm. I would say usually the slower we go, <laughs> the more we start to discover stuff, right? My right knee would love nothing more than to move into the inside. By the way, it's my right knee that often gives me issues, right? So hmm, that's interesting. I try to stabilize my pelvis. If you haven't been doing that, that is okay. Begin now to stabilize your pelvis as you track that heel in and out, knee pointing straight up to the sky. If you're not sure, you can always look at your knee, watch what it's doing if you can't feel it, yeah? But notice it usually has the tendency to go one way or the other, and we're just trying to keep it in the center. And then the next time that you pull it up, you're gonna leave it up and you're gonna go ahead and put your foot on the ground and just pause for a moment. Notice your right leg compared to your left. A few places that we can feel that work that we just did. I'm hoping you feel some of it right on the, right above your knee, your kneecap in that right thigh. But you know, I also feel my psoas a little bit. My hamstrings had to work because I was flexing my foot and tracking the heel. So now we're gonna do that left leg. So go ahead and push that left heel out, right? And again, you can leave your hands on the hips just so you feel whether or not that left hip is dropping or lifting. And you're gonna pull the heel back. My toes point up to the sky the whole time. My knee points up to the sky the whole time. Go ahead and just start to do that motion for yourself. Um, I didn't say it on the other side, but even here, I can pretend both of my thighs are moving into the midline like they're holding or squeezing something gently so that I keep that deep, deep corset turned on the whole time. That'll relieve a little work from your psoas if you use your corset. Transversus abdominis. And we're gonna do this about two, maybe three more times. Again, we're all working at different paces. 
hopefully working pretty slowly and being patient with the work, right? This stuff, it's not like it's super sensational and it's not like you're going to walk away with like, whoa, I worked those muscles out like crazy. Feel the pain, man, right? But it is something that if done on a regular basis, next time you're up, you'll leave the foot on the ground and the knee um, in the bent position. Um, but if you do this stuff on a regular basis, boy, oh boy, it really starts to teach everything from your deep corset to your psoas to, right, everything learns to work together. So it all supports that knee joint, as opposed to sometimes we just tend to use one or two muscles aggressively. <laughs> so we find that collaboration. Bring that right knee into the chest. Go ahead and give that knee a little hug. You can let that low back round. That might feel like a little relief, A in general, and B after that work we just did of stabilizing and put that right foot down on the ground. And then you're gonna bring the left knee in. And again, feel free to let the low back round if that's all right with your body, if that feels good. Um, I don't think I have anyone with you know um, um, any herniated discs or anything, but you might leave a little bit of that rounding out of your back if you're doing this on the video. Bring that left foot down to the ground. And this time we're going to bring the right knee up, but we're going to bring it up to tabletop, right? So my knee is above my hip. My heel is directly out from my knee. Put your fingertips on your hip points, your as-is bones. They're the frontal hip points, right? And you're going to try to keep that right hip stable as you release the right leg over to the right in fire hydrant. So and sometimes we're on our knees and we lift the leg. This is the opposite because the opposite position of gravity. Go ahead and bring that right knee up. So you might not go quite as far as you go when you're on hands and knees. That's okay, right? And then go ahead and move out. Imagine my hands on your outer thigh and you're pushing out into my hand keeps hugging the right glute in and go ahead and push into my hand which is now in your inner thigh to bring that leg back up to neutral and again we're going to reach it out to the side we're not letting our right hip drop down here we're hugging our right glute into stabilize and we're going to bring that leg back up and then from there, go ahead and put that foot down on the ground, just that this round. If all you're, all you're feeling is like, oh my God, the front of my right hip flexor is crazy tight, right? You have a tendency to overuse your psoas. Probably, probably. I shouldn't say that without looking at your body, but we need a little more low abdominals. I'm in your school, by the way. Bring that left leg up in a tabletop position. Move those thighs into an imaginary block so you turn on your deep abdominals, your corset, right? And then hands on frontal hip points, release the left leg over to the left. I try not to let my knee come further up towards my, my armpit nor down towards the bottom of the mat and bring that back to center. So I keep my femur bone in line, if that makes sense, yeah? And the left leg releases out to the left. I push out into Crystal Joy's imaginary hand on the outside of the thigh. And now I move my hand to the inside of your thigh and you're going to push into my hand on the inside of the thigh. Yeah. Do that one more time. Go ahead and release that out. And if you're working at your own pace, that's awesome. I, I should have given you that option. I'm sorry. And bringing that back up and then go ahead and put that foot down and pause for just a moment. <clears throat> and notice what you notice. I like to lift my hips up every once in a while and set them back down just in case they kind of, or even wiggle them, jiggle them around. So we're going to do one more bit of strength. I forgot to tell you to have your block handy, but a block is handy if you want to put a block between your thighs, but you certainly don't have to. It's just a really good tool to keep our hips in a neutral position. You're going to tee the arms out and bring both legs up in a tabletop. Yeah. Take an inhale with an exhale, let the knees go over to the right. You do not have to go far. This is a gentle class after all, right? And inhale back up. But the whole time I'm going to move into the block, exhale the knees over to the left. And now you know the pattern, yeah? You'll inhale back up and go ahead and now take this at your own timing, your own pace. My heels stay hip distance. My knees stay hip distance. The block, I'm moving into the block to try to keep my hips stacked on top of each other as I move from side to side. If and when you're ready, you can always look the opposite direction and pin the opposite shoulder down. So when my knees go to the left, I pin my right shoulder down. Yeah. And the same would be true on the other side. Watch how much for some of us, the heels want to come together when we go off to the side, try to keep them separate. Most of y'all know, I talk about your inner groin rolling in this position. It would be forward towards the front of your mat. Yeah. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Just try to keep your heels of distance. <laughs> and then after you finish left the next time, go ahead and put the feet down and release the block. So you know you're a snorter when, when you go back home after a couple of days of being there, you snort, your mom says, there it is. I've been waiting for that snort. <laughs> 
I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a snorter. I always have been. <laughs> soften the psoas, soften the abdominals. So that was for our obliques, which are kind of our side waist that we were just working. We're going to do one more, a little core heavy while we're here on the floor, because I love it. We're, uh, we're in a different relationship to gravity and we can still do deep core work without having to engage 5,000 other muscles while we're trying to find it. Interlace your hands behind your head, if that's okay with your shoulder girdle, right? And start with just regular old cat cow, but we're going to add a little action into it. So on an inhale, I want you to lift your low back up off the floor just a little bit, right? By pushing down into your hips and your shoulders and your arms if they reach the floor, even the back of the head. And then on your exhale, I want you to pull the low belly down and you're gonna lift yourself up and curl up into cow, elbows come up and in. And inhale, come down. And again, still cat cow, right? I push my hips, I push my, 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 my sacrum, I should say, my arms and my head down a little, maybe my shoulder blades. And then when I exhale, I pull my belly down, I flat my low back to the earth and I lift, my tailbone gets light, my elbows get light, my crown of my head gets light. Okay, so now you know the cycle. Now pay attention. When you do this, do your knees want to move in or out? And one might want to do one direction and one might want to do the other. Can you keep your knees? I could have had you put the block between your legs for this too, by the way. You can if you want to, right? But just meaning, can you keep your pelvis fairly stable? It's rocking front to back, but try not to let it drip one right hip down or left hip down, right? And try to keep those knees hip distance and facing the ceiling the whole time. And then the next time you come up and in, if you want to add a little intensity, the knees are going to come in even as the elbows come up and in. Yeah. And you're still going to try to keep the knees hip distance the whole time and the heels, by the way. Right. So I'm going in and out of cat cow, but I'm working my deep abdominals. And now I'm starting to do a stretch in my upper back and my neck if I keep my, my head laying in the hammock of the hands and I don't overuse my neck muscles. You shouldn't have to here. That's why we have our hands behind our head. But you know, it took me probably about two years to learn to release my neck muscles. No joke. About two years. Are both heels hitting the ground at the same time when you slowly release down to the ground? Is that available? Maybe it's the right heel that always hits first, right? That's partly muscular, partly, opro partly pro proprioceptive sense. Next time you're down, stay down. Release your arms back to Shavasana style arms. Walk your feet out just a little bit. Lean the knees in and pause for just a moment, right? So hopefully, hopefully we feel like we've really started to warm up that whole abdominal region on the side and even the low back. We've started to work with the paraspinals, right? So we're gonna go into the paraspinals a little deeper. Go ahead and you're simply gonna roll over onto your belly. If you don't know, the paraspinals run from your pelvis all the way up to your skull, three sets on either side of your spinal column. They're pretty important for stabilizing the spine. You're gonna go into crocodile, the version where we stack our hands on top of each other is where we're gonna start. And we bring our forehead down to the backs of the hands. I'm gonna to try to leave my head a little higher so you can hear me a little better. But if you can bring your forehead down, I'm just making fists so I'm higher. So first, just kind of notice your feet. Instead of a wider version, again, our feet and our knees are going to try to be the, the, the um, hip distance. I like to lift my hips up one at a time and just try to, you know, create a little bit of space, reach the leg back, and I reach through my toes and create space right at my psoas, right, the hip flexor. Now push down into the feet, so let your thighs get buoyant here, and try to move the tailbone down to the ground. For me, that lengthens my low back and it tones my low belly up. Move into that imaginary block between the thighs, right? Doesn't have to be agro, just a nice gentle movement in. Now, hopefully we've stabilized our low backs so that when we do this, that doesn't take the brunt of it. And we start to work with the paraspinals and the upper back, yeah? So from there, you're going to go ahead and you're going to push down into your elbows and you're going to lift up into a version of baby cobra. It is very small, right? My crown of my head reaches forward, not my chin. And exhale, come on down. Leave your lower body turned on, please, if you don't mind. <clears throat> and inhale, push down into your arms. So I'm not turning off that, that feet down, thighs up, tailbone down, low belly up version. I'm keeping that this whole time as I rise up and down, maybe about two, maybe three more times, right? I move my shoulder blades towards my buttocks as I lift up and push into my arms. 
And then the next time that you push down to rise up, I'd like you to stay up if it's available. Keep moving on the breath if you're like, no way, Jose. For some of us, this is plenty. <clears throat> For some of us, we're gonna curl our toes under and we're gonna push our heels back, the very middle of the heels. For most of us, that means we need more inner heel. From there, you're gonna slide your elbows over to the right and then push down into your arms and slide your belly over to the right. So my hips don't move, but I'm, I'm at an angle to the right with my entire spinal column, right? Now I'm going to pull my arms back. They get stuck on my mat, but as I traction my arms back to my hips and I pull my belly button towards my hands and I push my inner left heel back, I'm hoping maybe you feel the inner left abdominal wall, right? It's on the side body. So it'd be on the left side, but it's deep in the abdomen. And now we're beyond the psoas. We're beyond that hip flexor. And hopefully we're up in the actual abdomen wall. Take one more breath from there. If anything's too much, you could uncurl the toes. You could not go as far to the right. Come back through center and just set your body down. Get your belly bouncing over. Get your hands over. Uncurl your toes and just pause there for a moment. And just notice if you're right abdominal wall feels any different than your left abdominal wall. And I got to tell you, I feel that one all the way up into my diaphragm. Even it stretches my diaphragm. I love this stretch so much. This area gets really tight on me. I hold a lot of tension. A lot of my emotional tension is in my pelvis and my abdominal wall. And, you know, after being home for 10 days with, you know, some hard times, whew, I got to tell you, holy moly. I went to my chiropractor early. We'll put it that way. He went to adjust me yesterday and I just started bawling. I'm like, well, there's a little emotional build up. <laughs> Press the feet down, the thighs lift, tailbone down, low belly up, push the arms down, come up. We're in center right now. Shoulder blades towards the buttocks. Now curl your toes under if that feels right for you. Push your heels back. It's all the same stuff, right? But I'm in a little bit more of an arc now, a little more extension. I'm going to slide my elbows over to the left and then I'm going to push down and I'm going to slide my belly button to the left as well. And hopefully my spine is at an angle to the left. Now I'm going to pull my hands back to my belly button. My belly button pulls forward to my hands. My shoulder blades move to my back. I push through my right inner heel and maybe, maybe if we're so lucky, we feel our inner right abdominal wall. And when I say that it's not the middle of the abdomen that I'm talking about, it's usually more towards the side body. Yeah. But hopefully deep, deep, deep in there. Yeah. And not quite so superficial, right? Which is means close to the skin as skin is all superficial means. And one more breath there if it's feeling okay. I feel it in my right low back, by the way, too, right? That's, the, that's a really tight spot for me. Come back through center. And again, you're going to release yourself down and uncurl your toes and just take a little break, a little rest on the back of your hands. Notice what you notice in that beautiful body of yours. So now we're gonna move back into child's pose. You guys, I don't mean to alarm you. We're gonna come off of our backs and our bellies. <laughs> Push into your hands, leave the knees down and move yourself back. Feel free to um, let the knees go wide or if you wanna leave the knees in version, you can. Hips towards the heels. I would be remiss to say, since we're working in a gentle class, that if you have knee pain, and Lori talked to me if you need a modification, you could take that blanket. I just happen to have two, and you could put the blanket and jam it in at the knee joint. And usually that spaces the knee out and takes pain out of the knee. You could also simply leave the hips higher or lay on your back in a child's pose, hugging the knees in and why. So find a version that works for your body. If, if uh, there isn't anything I said there that works for you, Right. Usually laying on the back works for most everybody. You might sway the hips a little bit from side to side. Lori, I'd be careful with that, especially if the knee is talking, but it might still feel okay. And then come on back to center to get that back side body. Stretch your arms out in front of you. And similar to where we just went, right? We're gonna walk our hands over to the left, to the right, to the right, to the right, right, right. And then slide your left hand forward and away. You're on that blanket probably. So that's a really great way to slide that arm forward and lengthen out of that left side back. And you know, just notice where you feel it. I'm talking about the low side back, but I feel it in my inner left armpit. I feel it right by my left neck a little bit, which means my trap is active. So I gotta soften my trap. So the body gives us so many clues too, right? As to how we can soften or maybe work something a little more. Come back to your center, walking over to the left, sliding those hands forward, especially that right hand, if it's available, lengthening out of that right side waist. Where do you feel it on this side? Is it any different than the other side? Is your neck tight? Is your jaw tight? Are your upper traps turned on, right? So check into those spots. 
And then come on back through center and come on up to hands and knees, please. Okay, so from hands and knees, you can always take this blanket and fold it over a couple more times if you need a little more padding. We're gonna do just um, three things here. It'll take a little bit of time, but hopefully not, you know, we won't be here forever. Um, and Miss Lurie, talk to me if you need a modification. From here, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna reach that right leg back behind you with the toes curled under, straight leg, right? How, like we often do. And first, just go ahead and rock a little forward and back. And if you feel like you need the sticky mat, you could just totally get this blanket out of there. But personally, I'm going to leave it under me for padding for my knee. And then come back to center. Now lift the leg to hip height <clears throat> and bend the knee. Heel faces the ceiling, right? And it doesn't have to be high. If you need to lower the leg a little bit to do that, please do. Work that inner groin up to the ceiling, or I could say work it towards the midline so that we keep that knee in line with the hip. And then push your heel up to the ceiling without losing that. Don't let the right hip lift. And then lower it down a little bit. And then you're going to pulse it up to the ceiling, right? Keep your low belly and your ribs toned in. Don't let them fall down. That's one of my biggest things that wants to happen in my body when I do this move, right? My ribs really want to flare real bad. So I don't go very high. <laughs> and I'm pushing my heel directly up to the ceiling each time. Isn't this fun? Isn't this so much fun, you guys? <laughs> Look a little forward, keep that chest open. Try not to collapse and round the upper back here, right? So the spine is still hopefully elongated. We've been working that line, yeah? And maybe one more time, push up and then bring the heel as close as you can to your buttocks. That's just for a little hamstring activation. And then go ahead and bring that foot down. Now we'll go to the other side. Curl the left toes under, straighten the leg behind you and go ahead and just pulse a little forward and back and just say hi to that left calf muscle. And then lift the leg to hip height, right, right here. Find that inner groin rotating up, the toes pointing down, tone the belly and the abdomen, look a little forward, long spine, and then bend the knee, heel faces the ceiling-ish. Knee can drop, by the way, a little bit. And then from there, pulse the heel up to the ceiling, and then lower it down. And again, you know, I'm still going to encourage you to move really slow. I know it's torturous sometimes for us, but A, it's good for our nervous system. We're used to go, 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 go. Got to get this done. Got to do this many reps. I got to stop here and then I got to go there and then I got to go to work and then I got to pick up the kids, right? So it's good to get out of that mentality. And then B, the slower we move, the more we can bring awareness to what's happening. The more we notice, oh crap, my ribs are dropping down to the ground and I'm compressing my mid back right? The more we notice, oh, wow, my knee is out really wide right now. I'm not in line with my hip joint and so on and so forth. Maybe one more time, pulse up and then go ahead, reel that heel in like it was on a fishing pole, right? Bring that heel as close to your buttocks as you can. That's the hamstrings reeling in is what I mean when I say that. I didn't say that very well. And then go ahead and release that knee down. And we're going to do a little lunge series here. So you might bring those blocks in. I am going to, and I'm going to step my right foot forward between my hands. And um, Lori, this might be the one where it hurts a little bit. You could always lift the leg. You're just going to have to work a little harder and then go ahead and move that hip, those hips forward and down. Now we're going to be a little more passive than we sometimes are with this. Maybe putting those blocks on high. I actually don't want you to round down into the leg. I want you to put the hands on the blocks, right? Slide the shoulder blades down the back and get just a little bit of that upper back bend, that work we were doing laying on the floor, right? So we're in extension in the spine, but we keep the belly toned in. We move the tailbone forward, all the same things we did on the ground. Hopefully we get a deep stretch in the front of the left hip, the hip flexor, but we also get a little bit of that paraspinal work through the rest of the spine, right? <clears throat> that extension. So when we go into extension, all of the three groups on either side of the spine, they've got to tighten just a little bit, right? Take one more breath from here. And then from there, we're going to walk the right foot out to the right, bring both blocks inside, and now it's lizard. So let the hips start to move down, especially the right hip coming inside that leg. And feel free to come down on blocks with the forearms, come down to the ground with the forearms. Whatever works for you is just wonderful. You should do that version, right? I like to stay a little higher. I find a little more in my right hip personally. <clears throat> and you might even keep a little bit of that paraspinal information going on if you want it, right? If it's feeling like, oh yeah, that would be helpful since I round forward every day, most days, since I sleep on my side for eight hours every night in a ball, right? Whatever your habits are, we, most of us round a lot. It's not wrong. It's one of the movements of the spine. It's awesome. I'm so glad we can. Can you go the other way? 
right? And if the answer is, whoo, that's a lot harder, you might work the other line. And then from there, we got one more move to this and it's gonna be possibly intense for some folks. You're gonna go ahead and it's a twist. You don't have to add it in. You're gonna let that right knee go out if it wants to. You're gonna put your right, right hand on the right thigh and my left arm is still down on my block or I can put my hand on the earth and I'm gonna move myself into a little bit of a twist. If my neck hurts, I turn and I look down, which is what I'm gonna do because I have a crick in my neck, right? But you might turn and look up and breathe. Now for one more breath and you might be like, you're hilarious, Crystal Joy Johnson. Flex your, uh, 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 you're gonna reel that heel in again, your left heel, reel the left heel in, reach back with that right hand and grab the foot so you're in a quadricep stretch. You're on the top of the knee flesh of the left knee, so hopefully that's not hurting, but for uh, Lori, obviously this might not be right for you. And breathe, open that chest and release that foot down if you were in the quadricep stretch, <clears throat> pardon me. Bring that right foot down and release yourself back. We're gonna go right to the other side so we can get out of these knees, okay? So we're gonna step that left foot forward <clears throat> and we're gonna to start to move forward into that lunge. So really let the hips move forward and down. But again, I'm gonna stay a little higher on my blocks and I'm gonna to try to work my back body at the same time that I work my, my hip flexor. I'm in full extension, right? If I slide my shoulder blades down my back and reach my chest forward and up, kind of like we did in those super baby bujangasanas, we get those paraspinals to start to contract lightly, move the tailbone forward. That often does a few things, right? If we really let that tailbone tuck forward towards the front of the room, we can feel the deeper stretch in our right hip flexor but we also get that protection of the low back, the lengthening, right? And then we also might even start to feel how that could possibly ignite our pelvic floor and our low abdominals again. Take another breath from here. You're almost there, I promise. We're gonna walk our left foot out to the left, both hands inside. We're going to inhale and extend the spine and then come on down. And again, I'm not saying you can't round the spine. If that's where you're like, that's where I want to be. But you might consider for today's purposes, staying a little higher, inviting the left hip down. And again, still playing with that idea <clears throat> of working with the back body here, the strengthening of the back body along your spinal column. And I didn't say it very early the last time, but if that right leg wants to, um, left leg wants to move away a little bit, we're not holding on to it as much today. We're letting that be pretty foot loose and fancy free, right? Take another breath from here and then we'll do our little add on. And I'm gonna turn so you can see me just in case it doesn't make sense, right? So from here, <clears throat> I go ahead and I leave my right forearm grounded. I bring my left hand to my hip or hand, whatever you're working with. And I turn towards that leg and I go into a little bit of a twist. You could stay exactly where we were. You could add the twist or not. Again, if your neck is hurting, you can look down. That's usually the gentlest on the neck, but you can turn and look up if that feels right for your body. I'm going the gentler version myself today. And then from there, maybe, maybe you bend that right knee and you reel that heel into the buttocks. We tried it earlier because it was easier there. That left hand reaches back, maybe, maybe not, and grabs the top of the foot or toes or whatever the heck you get and high quadriceps. And if you're like, you're hilarious, Crystal Joe Johnson, leave the foot down and just do the twist or just do the lizard, do the lizard. Do the lizard. So right now we're in kind of half pigeon in the front leg. We're in a little bit of lizard, right? So it's, um, you know, it's blizzard. <laughs> bring that hand back down, bring that leg back down, push the hips up, the body up. So the hips come up. And if you want one more child's pose before we come up, you got time for a child's pose here. You could lay on your back for a child's pose or you could stand and forward fold and just be there and we'll meet you in a second if your knees are not enjoying this series today. Take one more, two more breaths for my uh, child's poser-ers. Right. And then most of us still probably have that blanket down. So we're going to come up and we're going to take a second and we're going to fold that blanket or just shoot it off your mat. I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to need it. I reserve the right to say you do if <laughs> in a little bit. So from there, downward dog, if downward dog seems like it would be nice. Some of my gentle friends don't really like downward dog. So you could, again, just simply hang in a forward fold. Or, you know, what's an awesome version of downward dog that's gentler is walking up to a wall or a countertop and putting your hands on it about the height of the hips. And then you've got this beautiful, and I'm demonstrating that one right now. You've got, you've got the same shape of downward dog. 
feel free to move it out or whatever you want to do, my friends who are in any version of downward dog, right? And breathing. But again, I'm showing the gentler version of downward dog where you're not bearing the weight, but you're still getting the length in the spine. You're still working your shoulders a little bit. Take another breath wherever you're working from. And then my friends whose hands are on the ground, you're gonna walk your hands back to your feet. My friends who are against the wall, you're gonna bring your hands down onto your shins and soften in. Let's all meet in a forward fold towards the back of our mat. Hands in the shins and reach the chest forward. Exhale and fold. One more time. You remember all that paraspinal crap I was talking about? So can you move your thighs in towards each other? We're about parallel to the floor, by the way. Can you think of pulling your tailbone a little forward or down to the ground to tone your belly up? Find that length of the low back, hands on the hips, elbows up. Come all the way up to standing with that strong, strong spine. Whew, reach those arms down by the side. So I will always add strength. I don't think gentle is just stretching the body. I think that it's also a combination, right? I think always a combination. If we wanna stabilize our bodies, it is strengthening and it's the ability to find flexibility, mobility, those kinds of things, the suppleness in the body. So come on up to the top of the mat. Let's go through two half salutations. If rounding the spine's not right for you, you would just stay higher. Inhale, reach those arms out and up. Exhale and how good it probably feels to flow since we've been in a little bit of stillness for a bit. Inhale, chest forward. Find that beautiful toning of the low belly, yeah. Exhale, folding in. And inhale, it's that same spine. Hands can be on the hip, that's the gentlest. Arms can reach out, takes a little more vigor. <laughs> And exhale, arms down by the side, wherever you just were. And do that one more time for me. Inhale. If you want to work at a different pace, please, please, please do. Exhale. You know it more than you think you do. Inhale. Attention to low, deep abdominals. We've been working those lines today. That's why. Exhale. Fold in. Inhale. Come all the way up to standing. Whatever version you'd like. And we reach our arms down by our side. And then from there, we're gonna interlace, interlock our thumbs behind our back. Yeah, if that's not available, grab a strap. Bend the elbows a little bit. And then you're gonna push in, I'm gonna get out of sunshine so you can see me better. You're gonna push into the sacrum to move the elbows back behind you without the ribs flaring, without the abdomen flaring, right? No copper tone baby bellies. I keep the hips and the ribs gently moving towards each other, or I think of, you know, the tailbone moving forward. There are many ways to talk about that, by the way. And then I'm gonna pull my thumbs apart, right? Or into each other, whichever version makes sense to you, but I'm saying the same thing, right? As my thumbs pull into one another, I start to activate those muscles between my shoulder blades, which helps my collarbone open, which helps my lungs broaden. So breathe deeply into those lungs. Can you get all of the lobes of the lungs? Did you know you have more than just one lobe in each lung? <laughs> right? And we don't use the other ones very often. So inhale deeply and try to fill up the entirety of both lungs as much as you can. And then go ahead and release those hands. We're actually going to come down onto our mat again, um, just to show you where we're going first, why you can see me. If you want to come down and kneel for a second, you can, or you can stand. I'm just going to show you briefly, and then we'll go into it. You can't see me as well once you're down. We'll do that one where we're going to reach our hand out to the side. We're going to roll onto our side body, right? And we'll, we'll move the knees into um, flexion. We'll have the knees bent. You can use that other hand under the forehead for a rest, or, or you can use a block. You know, and some of us, we might just stay right here. Some of us might bring that top hand behind and work that shoulder open, kind of like we just did there. And we're going to main stretch being in that bottom shoulder, the shoulder that'll be on the bottom. So come on down onto your belly again. <laughs> All this, <laughs> we're on our, on, our, on our mats a lot down here on the floor, I should say. Let's go to the right side first. I showed you the left side because it was the closest to you. Straighten, straighten the right arm out at the height of the shoulder. And then from there, you're gonna bend your, bring your knees together. Bend your knees and you roll onto your right side body and you bring those knees in front of you at about a 90 degree kind of like tabletop. 
Now you have that block to put under your head. You have that right hand to put under your head if you're not gonna work the, um, with the left hand, I'm saying it wrong. I'm not mirroring you, right? But soften the neck is my point. Now you got a couple of options with this left hand. You can use it as a pillow under the head. You can put the fingertips out in front of the chest and you can push and twist that left shoulder open a little more. Or you might bring that left hand behind you to the small of the lower back-ish. And as you push into the lower back, roll your left shoulder open, which is going to, the reason we're doing it isn't the left shoulder, but do you feel how when you stack that left shoulder more over the right, that right shoulder is like, woo wee, yeah? Don't kill the right shoulder, please. Leave the left shoulder further forward if that's what the right shoulder wants. But breathe into the right shoulder and try to soften the right shoulder as much as you can now that you've kind of found your home. I have one more stop on this journey and it's not a necessary stop. But if you want to bend that left knee to the chest and grab onto the foot with your left hand and move into half bow pose on the top side of the body, that would be the last option. Let that inner left groin reach behind you, knees in line with the hip joint, roll the left shoulder open. So it's similar, right? But now we've got that whole quad line and we're in a little bit of a back bend on the left side. Take another breath wherever you are, please. My friends who have the leg, you're gonna release the leg and we're gonna stack the knees. We're all gonna bring our left hand down to the ground, moving blocks if you need to, rolling onto belly. And then, you know, you might wanna come, uh, whatever you wanna do. I like to come up a little bit on my forearms and just roll through my shoulders a couple of times between sides, but it can be, you know, down here and just moving the shoulder around or just if there's any movement you want before we go to that other side, go ahead and take it. Yeah? And then when you're ready, you're going to reach the left arm out. That palm comes down again. I'm about the height of my shoulders. And then I bring my legs together and bend my knees and reach them over to the right. So I'm rolling on to my left side body. I support my head, whichever way is best for my body. And it might be that your head comes down to the ground. But for me, that, that hurts my neck a little bit. I don't like that very much. So I can use my right hand as a pillow. I can use my right fingertips in front of my body, push into the fingers to roll my right shoulder up. I can bring my right hand to the small of my back, pushing into the back, letting the right shoulder lift and stack over my left. And again, it's not about the right shoulder. The reason I'm doing that is to get deeper into my left shoulder. Find out what the left shoulder feels is suitable. Be compassionate to your left shoulder. Don't brood it into something you think it should do because, right? <laughs> Anyone else do that or is that just me? And for my friends who want that last piece, we hug the right knee in towards the chest and grab the ankle. And then we reach the right knee down towards the bottom of the mat, roll the right shoulder open again. And I'm not going to do it on this side because my left shoulder um, is not completely back from that rolling the kayak business. So I'm going to stay in a gentler version myself, right? Right inner groin rolling back if you are doing half bow on the upper body. And then my upper bow, uh, my, 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 my half bow people release the leg back down. All of us, right hand comes down to the ground to ease us down as we straighten our legs back behind us. And again, whatever movement in the shoulder feels good if you want to just kind of move that shoulder around a little bit. And again, I like to come up into kind of a um, somewhere between crocodile and sphinx, but it might feel really good to you to just be on the ground. Now, here is the next move we've got one more move for the opposite side of the shoulder and then we're pretty much in shavasana people if you wear glasses you're probably not going to want them for this you're going to reach your left arm out in front of you and you're going to slide your right hand past you now when you set down you're going to bring your right shoulder down away from your ear and then see if the head can come down to the ground if it cannot that left hand comes in in crocodile and you support yourself with your left wrist or hand yeah i'm going to leave my head supported here personally on my forearm. And then you're going to try to soften. So that right arm, hopefully it's not down so far. It's on breast tissue and compressing and hurting breast tissue. Hopefully it's not all the way up to your shoulders and your ear. Kind of try to find that sweet spot. <clears throat> and then try to release everything. Yeah. Soften your body just as much as you can. And, you know, if you can't feel this, what you're doing now, <clears throat> pardon me, is instead of the front of the shoulder and the pectoralis major, the front of the chest and shoulder, we are now in that area shoulder blade itself so we're trying to just stretch and open that area there's fascia and uh, mainly fascia that we're getting into but we're also getting into some of the muscles back there can you soften can you do this this is hurt it's just if this is hurting you right then ease off a little bit 
I would say a variation might be to just lay on your back and hug the right arm across the body. And I'm showing that variation in case that doesn't make sense. That's the gentler version, right? Where your body's not fully bearing down. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and, oh, I forgot to address the left hand. The other version would be downward dog if your head's all the way to the earth, sorry about that. And then you're moving your left hand back and push into the hand to come through center. And again, before we go straight to that other side, you know, any, any little movement through the body or through the shoulders, that feels good. So this is addressing, um, and hopefully, Laura, you're feeling this, um, but everybody, but um, the area around the shoulder blade, the upper traps and the neck, this, that it all blends together, right? It's all so very connected. Right hand comes down on the floor to support you while you reach the left hand past the right inner wrist, thread that needle over, right? And then again, I don't wanna be on my breast tissue, but I wanna pull my left shoulder down away from my ear a little bit. My head might just come down to the earth here. I personally like to use my right hand across and crocodile to support my head. If your head is on the earth and you're comfortable, you could reach the arm forward like downward dog. I forgot to say that on the other side. I'm so sorry. And then, you know, soften. So when I get into this, I get like, I start to hold in my jaw. I start to hold in my hips. I start to hold in my left shoulder gets protective. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to soften every muscle in my body. And my, I'm sorry if my voice is muted here. I'm trying to stay up a little bit for you. but try to soften every single muscle. That's one of the benefits of when we're on our bellies and our backs. I mean, we can work strongly, but boy, we can get into positions and because we're not working against gravity or fighting gravity to stay upright, boy, you can really soften stuff, yeah? Again, you would lay on your back and just hug the left arm across the body if this is too intense for you for any reason at all. And when you're ready, you'll bring that right hand under the shoulder-ish. Go ahead and lift yourself up. We're going to roll onto our back in a second. But before you do, if you feel like you would like any kind of movement at all, again, it doesn't have to look like my movement. Just listen to your body. I like to close my eyes and just kind of feel it out what it wants. And then you're going to roll onto your back body, which will probably feel really good. <laughs> mm. And breathe. Take just a couple of moments, not doing anything in that beautiful open position. You can be in full extension, but your feet can also be on the ground. But especially uh, since we just had a focus in the upper body, you know, hopefully, gosh, maybe we feel like we're a little broader across the back of the body and the upper back area, I mean, and the front of the chest, both sides of the body maybe feel a little more spacious, a little more relaxed, maybe. Okay, so just a little bit of neck work. If your legs are extended, feet on the ground might be a softer version. Just pointing that out. You can do whatever feels groovy. Doesn't matter to me. Your head's gonna stay down on the earth. You're not lifting the weight. Go ahead and rock your head over to the right. And then you might just stay right there. Maybe you gently tuck that chin, that chin down towards that right shoulder and just tuck in a little bit, right? And let that left kind of back side of the neck get a little stretch. And then release the tucking and then roll the head back to center, right? So gently just rock the head over to the left, pause. That might be your edge. Maybe you tuck the chin actively down towards the collarbone. Um, again, I'm not gonna do that because that goes into my little prick in my neck, but feel free to do that if that works for your neck. And then release the tucking of the chin, soft neck muscles, and then roll yourself back through center. Now, the next one, you're gonna interlace your hands behind your head. Part of the trick to this, the trick to this, is to keep the neck entirely soft, right? I don't make my head and my neck do anything, but rather my neck is so soft that it will get a stretch when I do this. I'm gonna exhale and push my belly down to the ground, moving into cat, lifting my body up maybe three inches above the ground or something, you're not very high, and my elbows stay the same height. I'm gonna let my right elbow slide towards the front of the mat and back to center. So I'm just gonna talk about what's happening in the, in the arms first, right? I let my left shoulder slide forward towards the front of my mat. And I come back to center. Now that's what you're doing over and over, right? As my right elbow slides forward, if I keep my neck super soft and my head laying in my hammock, my left hand kind of pushes my head, my skull, and I end up turning to the left. I'm not turning my head to the left. I'm not trying to. As my left elbow slides down, my neck is so dang soft that my right palm kind of helps it into a little gentle turn. 
and back through center. If that's hurting or not making sense, please don't do it. Otherwise, one more time, my right elbow slides forward and my head turns to the left, not because I'm turning it, but because my neck is so dang soft. And by the way, I couldn't do this one in the beginning either because my neck didn't know how to let go. So I would get really tense. And so I didn't do much of it because it didn't feel good. <laughs> Lay back down, but now I can let go of my neck. My upper traps and my neck have finally learned how to let go. Boy, oh boy, was that a long, long, long progress, progression. Pause and just notice what you notice. Bring your arms closer to your side, last bit, and then it's Shavasana time. When you reach your right arm overhead, oh, actually, no, 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 I'm going to change it. We're going to do typewriter. Bring your hands onto your elbow points. Your forearms are above your chest-ish. Let the elbows move over to the right like a typewriter carriage. And back to center. So we already kind of worked this line, right? Over to the left when we laid on our arm. Do you notice that's the same motion? Yeah. And back through center. But now we're going to add neck motion. So this time when you go to the right, you're going to turn your head to the right if that feels okay with your neck. And I rock. And back through center. And then you'll go to the left. And again, I'm not picking up the weight of my head. I'm just letting my head rock over and do that one more time. Let the head go the same way as the elbows. And we're all moving at different paces. So the next time that your elbows go to the right, you're going to turn your head to the left. So you might just leave it over there when your elbows have gone to the left and then let your elbows move to the right, heads to the left and then back to center and then go the opposite direction. As my elbows go to the left, my head turns to the right. As always, I give the invitation. If that hurts or doesn't feel right, don't do it. Do the movement of the neck with the arms that feels right for your body, please. Compassion, compassion, compassion. And then you'll end by letting the elbows go to the left and the head turn to the right. And then once you feel like you're complete, bring those arms down. Because we were playing so much with the shoulder blades, don't get crazy with this, but you might gently just move them in and down just a little bit, a little bit. You can leave the feet on the ground, knees bent, or extend the legs out to straight. Shavasana. If you feel cool, maybe use that blanket to cover up. As you scan through that body, noticing if there's tension and releasing that tension. If the mind wanders off, bring it back to scanning the body or to the breath. And you know, as I mentioned on Tuesday, I believe it was for about a month now, I've been playing with that. The healing is in the return. Maybe something hurts too much in the beginning, but we can start to come back to it and open that space up. Maybe it's just remembering that the present is awfully powerful and important too, and living here can be beautiful. Maybe it's that thing that even though we don't, don't want it to, it revisits us over and over and over again in our 20s, again in our 30s, again in our 40s. For me, low self-worth is huge right now, yeah. And every time I return to it, I get a little stronger. I learn a little more. And maybe for you right now, it just means you bring your awareness back to your breath. And that is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And friends, 
it is time to start to move towards upright. But as always, take your time. You might leave the eyes closed and see if that body wants to move in any particular way before you come up. Maybe it doesn't want to move at all before you come up. Hmm. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. It's just where you are. And where you are right now is exactly where you are supposed to be or meant to be might be a better word. Take that on whatever level you'd like. Bring those palms together in front of the chest. Inhale. As you bow your head in, just bowing your head to your heart, remembering they are one and the same. And may we always come from love and abundance instead of fear and scarcity. Namaste, friends. Ah.